Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's not a scientist but she is interested in science. Those of you who are regular watchers of our channel may have noticed that we had a little hiatus where we didn't post any new videos for a while. The reason for that was because we were in jail. I don't mean real jail, I mean YouTube jail. Let me explain. About a week ago, after spending several days researching, recording and editing a video, I uploaded it to YouTube and set it to premiere later in the evening. Cindy and I then decided to take a well-earned break and go for a walk. When we got back from our walk, I found this email from YouTube advising me that they had removed the video because they thought it violated their medical misinformation policy and that they had issued me with a strike. And a strike means you can't do things like upload, post or live stream for a week. A second strike prevents you from publishing content for two weeks. Three strikes in the same 90-day period results in your channel being permanently removed from YouTube. So fairly serious stuff. Fortunately, owing to the support of many people, we were able to exert enough pressure on YouTube for them to reassess their decision. And eventually, they not only reinstated my ban excess death video, but they also reinstated my ivermectin video that they had removed over a year ago. And this means that I'm not only out of jail, but I'm no longer on probation either. And Cindy isn't on probation anymore either. And I would just like to sincerely thank everyone who supported me. My initial instinct when my appeal was rejected was to just call it a day and enjoy my retirement. But the overwhelming support that I received changed my mind. Unfortunately, not all small YouTubers who debunk misinformation are as lucky. I know of many who have been unable to get their videos reinstated and some who have even lost their channels, and many who decide to stop making debunking videos because it's not worth the stress. Contrast this to large, profitable channels like Dr. John Campbell's, who regularly post misinformation with impunity. This is just one example of a Dr. Campbell video that was also posted to Facebook. As you can see, it has a warning saying false information checked by independent fact checkers. But this video that contains false information remains up on YouTube and currently has 2.4 million views. Misinformation pays well. And of course, it's not just Facebook that recognizes that Campbell's videos are misinformation. A number of other outlets have also called out his misinformation. For example, this article by Health Feedback calls out one of his many videos misinforming about ivermectin. This article by Dr. David Gorski at Science Based Medicine calls out his conspiracy theory claims about monkeypox. This article by Dr. Jessica MacDonald at SkyCheck calls out his misinformation about one of the Pfizer documents released by the FDA. This article by Full Facts calls out his misrepresentation of a study out of Singapore looking at adverse events in children. And this article by Rachel Schreyer from the BBC calls out his false insinuation that only 17,000 died of COVID in the UK. And that was just a small sample of articles calling out his misinformation. There are many, many more. There are also a number of videos on YouTube calling out his misinformation. And this is just three examples. And I'll put links in the video's description in case you want to watch them. And I would recommend you watch them because they're all really good. Oh, and I've made a few videos calling out his misinformation too. 
So why do all of Campbell's misinformation videos remain up on YouTube when they are supposed to have a medical misinformation policy? Well, basically, he uses various tricks to gain the system and avoid his videos being flagged. The first trick he uses is to claim that he is just quoting from government sources or scientific papers, when in fact he is misrepresenting the information from those sources. Um, again, this is from this, this is all from this paper here, this government report from the um, Healthcare and uh, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Uh, the absence of reproductive toxicity data is a reflection of the speed of development to first identify and select mRNA vaccines. So basically, they seem to be saying there wasn't time to do that. And it's rapid development to meet ongoing urgent healthcare needs. Now, uh, we did have ongoing uh, urgent healthcare needs. I'll leave you to decide whether we still have. What Campbell didn't show in this video is this information here, which is displayed prominently at the top of the website he is quoting from. The public assessment report summarises the initial assessment at the time of approval in December 2020. The text in the original report remains unchanged. Our advice is regularly updated on the basis of significant new data and our latest advice can be found in the summary of product characteristics and the summary of coronavirus yellow card reporting. In other words, Campbell is pretending he is reading current advice when in fact he is reading the data that was available in December 2020. And there are hundreds of other examples where he has done the same thing. A similar trick he uses is that he pretends to be presenting data from legitimate scientific papers when he isn't. Now, this is from the Journal of Antibiotics, uh, which we have here. So that's from this article here, Journal of Antibiotics, 15th of June 2021. Looks like, um, well, it is a pretty thorough article. Now, the Journal of Antibiotics is, in fact, a legitimate journal, which is probably why they retracted the article that Campbell is discussing when concerns were raised about it. Campbell, though, doesn't provide a link to the article on the journal's website where this is clear. He instead provides a link to an old copy of the article on an anti-vax blog. The next trick that Campbell uses to get around YouTube guidelines is what I like to refer to as the nudge, nudge, wink, wink trick. And here is John explaining how he does it. I, I do a lot through intimation, you know, giving the camera funny looks and, yeah. you know, you know yeah, pe yeah, people yeah. know what I mean, you know. And, and you yeah. get away with it. Yeah, you know, and of course, Vladimir Putin has nothing to do with that. Right, yeah. And that was me giving you a meaningful look in case you missed it. And here's an example of John using this trick in action. So it's reassuring to note, isn't it, that Public Health uh, Scotland can be so confident in the safety of the uh, vaccines. Now, um, we are operating under some constraints here. Uh, let, let me just um, clarify this because we want to make sure that we abide by the uh, guidelines. Now, this is from the uh, this is from this site here, which is the YouTube uh, vaccination uh, misinformation site telling us what we can and can't say and it just this is straight straight from this site don't paste any content in youtube if it includes harmful misinformation um, about currently approved and administered vaccines on any of the following so we mustn't include misinformation and as we'll see we've given the information directly from the government sites 
uh, vaccine safety so we're not allowed to have content uh, uh, alleging that vaccines cause chronic side effects outside of the rare effects that are recognized by health authorities and efficient efficacy of the vaccines content claiming that vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of disease so we won't be giving um, any evidence in contrary or in contradiction to that pretty audacious using youtube's own guidelines to cynically suggest that he thinks the opposite and you just have to read the comments under his videos to see that his fans are getting his message loud and clear and here's just one more example of how he uses the nudge nudge wink wink trick I'm not allowed to say content that claims that the vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of the disease. Now, some of you might think that that was implied by um, by Mr. Roos and Miss Small, but that's entirely your conjecture. That's nothing to do with me. And that was another meaningful look for me in case you didn't realise. The final trick John uses that I would like to show you is what I'm calling the carrot trick. This article, which was recently published by the BBC, explains how anti-vaxxers are using a carrot emoji instead of the word vaccine in an attempt to trick Facebook's algorithms and avoid censorship. Well, Dr. Campbell, along with Dr. Malhotra, used their own version of the carrot trick in a recent video where they did a double act spreading disinformation. I must mention this. We do also know there has been a, an excess in people suffering a sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, certainly in the UK, we've had 14,000 people in 2021 versus 2020 who had suffered a sudden cardiac arrest as yet unexplained. And of course, one of those causes could well be the, um, this pharmacological intervention. So Malhotra is using the tricky term pharmacological intervention instead of vaccine in order to share blatantly false information about the COVID vaccine. And he repeats the term and other variations of it again and again throughout the video. Just like the carrot emoji is meant to fool the Facebook algorithm, it appears the word pharmacological intervention is meant to fool the YouTube algorithm. But what about the claim that there has been an increase in cardiac arrests of 14,000 in 2021 over 2020? Is that true? This is our response to our freedom of information request asking for data on cardiac arrests in 2020 and 2021. And it explains that the information isn't actually collected, but that they do collect information on mortality from cardiac arrests. And the information on cardiac arrest mortality can be downloaded from this database here, given that on average fewer than one in 10 people in the UK survive an out-of-home cardiac arrest, it's not a bad proxy for cardiac arrests. If there has been a huge increase in cardiac arrests, there should be a huge increase in cardiac arrest mortality. So how does cardiac arrest mortality in 2021 compare with 2022? Here's the data that I downloaded. In England and Wales, there were 74 cardiac arrest deaths in 2020. And this went down to 57 cardiac arrest deaths in 2021. So where Dr. Malhotra got his bogus claim that there had been an increase of 14,000 cardiac arrests from is beyond me. Some of you may think that he pulled it out of his ass, but I'm not saying that. And this is just one example of the false information being spread in Campbell and Mahotra's video using the carrot trick. The trick is used multiple times. And if you would like to know why other claims in the video are 
also false, I have covered them in other videos and I'll provide links to them in this video's description. Of course, there are many, many more examples of how Dr. Campbell uses various tricks to spread misinformation with impunity. So if someone tells you that Dr. John Campbell never misinforms and that he just shows data from official government sources and scientific papers, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. And again, thank you to everyone who supported me during my YouTube battle. I can't thank you enough. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.